Welcome to Weld.com. I need to do a video uh, on oxyacetylene setup. I want to go through this for safe operation setup. Uh, everything about the torch, the hoses, the regulator. I don't take for granted that people know this when they come into my shop for the first time or I'm working around them for the first time. I'm, I'm watching them, okay? I'm not saying that I do it absolutely perfect, but I've been doing it for such a long time. I've never had a problem. It's a couple of things you want to do, follow some rules. Anyway, I want to go through and set this rig up for you. Let's get to it. First thing we want to do is inspect regulators, regulator fittings. I already have the oxygen on here, but I want to point out that anytime that you're, you're getting ready to set the regulators on the tanks for the first time, look at the seats. Okay, inspect these seats, make sure they're not dinged. If you drop one of these, it's got a dent in it. It's gonna make it a little harder for it to seat up. One thing to point out right now is, this is female left hand for the fuel gas. The Compressed Gas Association has made it almost impossible, I say almost. You can't put this regulator on an oxygen, you can't put the oxygen on the acetylene for a very good reason. Uh, low pressure, low pressure gauges, high pressure gauges. The fuel gas is left hand thread and it's indicated by a, a cut in the outside of the nut here. Okay, so I've inspected this. I want to thread this into the regulator. I'm up over the top of this. I'm turning it to the left to tighten it. That part's done. I don't have a torch on my hoses, so I'd like to move off to the, to the hoses and put them onto the torch body. I'm not turning these on yet. Next thing I need to do is attach the hoses to the torch body. Again, left hand thread, right hand on the oxygen. It's indicated by O and F for fuel gas. It's a good idea to occasionally check fittings. I've seen these actually in use for quite a while and they get loose and back off. You can do a leak check with soapy water. You go by with the wrench and snug them back up. Okay. So our hoses are correctly attached to the torch body. The next thing I want to move on to is attaching the, the uh, the cutting head or the cutting attachment onto the torch body. I'm gonna go ahead and put a tip in this. And again, <clears throat> I wanna look at, I wanna inspect the seats on this. There's two machine seats in here. One of them here and one of them here. And if this has a dent or if this has been dropped, this is soft enough material that it'll put a ding in this seat and then it won't seal up. I like to put these on, give them about a half twist or a quarter twist. This is the only nut that you want to put a wrench on. And I'll go ahead and just seat that. The next thing I want to do is inspect the O-rings and the seats in this part of the cutting attachment. These are easily replaceable. But if they're dry rotted, or I've, I've been using a torch before and the thing was blowing out in the threads right here and I wondered why and I stopped and shut it all down. I unthreaded this and it didn't even have an O-ring in there. That was joyful at the moment. So the way I like to put these together, always hang on to this. And I like to start the threads and get it down there where it's about to touch. I like to give it about a half twist and hand tighten this. Do not put a wrench on this. There is no reason to really crank this down. And I've seen people do this and it just, it just sends chills down my spine. 
they'll be operating their torch and they'll get a little blow by and they get a fire coming out of these threads. And the first thing they do is come over here and tighten it. Instead of taking this part and finding out why, they just go ahead and over tighten it. And I, I just disagree with that. So again, hand tight. I personally like to have my valves away from my cutting lever. It's just the way I've been operating it for years. I'm comfortable with it. I know that <clears throat> if I sling this hose over my shoulder, it's supposed to stay there. I know that, you know, I, it's just comfortable for me. So I'm getting ready to cut. Since I have the cutting attachment on here, I want to open this oxygen valve all the way and leave it open. My flame is now adjusted between the fuel gas here and the oxygen here. That's my flame adjustment. My cutting oxygen is on the lever. Okay, we've gone through <clears throat> setting the hoses up, configuring the torch, torch attachment, setting the tip. I wanna turn these bottles on. I see people shut their rigs down or they walk up to cylinders to turn on and they never check this. They leave them in the same place all the time where there's pressure on them. I don't, I don't think that's cool. Very, I had a very good friend of mine that repaired torches and regulators and he told me stories about the things that he's repaired that were just absolutely blew up and it wasn't cool. So back these off just so they're loose, they don't have a pressure on them. And when I say back them off, that's not to the right, that's to the left. You don't wanna back them off where the screw falls off, but just back them off where they're loose. Turn these on slow. Also stand to the side of them. A full bottle of oxygen's high pressure, 2,250 pounds, thereabouts. You know, turn this on full, but you don't want this, you don't want this pressure regular, pressure adjusting screw tightened and then come over here and crank this baby open. That's just, it's shocking that diaphragm on the back side of the delivery regulator. High pressure, low pressure delivery. Okay, for general cutting, depending on the size of torch, you can run your oxygen pressure up to 25. Some people run it up as high as 70. Same thing on the low pressure fuel side. Check this and make sure that it's loose. Turn this on slow. Fuel gas, we turn on one complete turn, depending on the size of the tip. We'll run the pressures up to six, seven, eight pounds, anywhere from five to eight, okay? Our system is closed. I have this closed and I have the fuel gas closed. My oxygen, my acetylene, my fuel gas, this is what I would adjust the flame with. Right now, before doing anything else, I can check for leaks. And I would simply do that. Since this is pressured up, my valves are closed, I can turn these cylinders off. And if either of the needles move anywhere in this system, I have a leak. Okay, I might be able to find a fuel leak because the acetylene stinks. I'm not gonna find it on the oxygen side. So I would stop at that point and go get some soapy water. And I would check that connection, that connection. If there's a splice in the hose somewhere, I would check that. I'd check this. If I've got a leak somewhere, it would show up with the soapy water. But that is a fast, ineffective, accurate way to check for leaks. My needles are not moving. I'm gonna turn this back on. Yes, I realize I didn't back that off. I didn't bleed the system either. I'll turn that on full. Turn this on one complete turn. If I need to do anything <clears throat> to take the cutting attachment off, then I need to close this valve. and then I could turn this any which way I want. So I think we're at a point where we can uh, test fire. Let me grab my striker. I'm gonna fire the system. 
I turn the acetylene on slowly, about a half turn, light it. I want to light it until I don't have a bunch of soot. I do not want to turn it on so that the flame separates from the tip either. Connect that back and get a good burn out here where it's not blowing soot. Slowly turn some oxygen on until I get a neutral flame. Looks like I have a fouled tip. This is an ot tip. An ot tip, nice and clean, should get a good burn in it. As I depress the oxygen lever, it actually gets shorter. To me, that indicates turbulence in that tip. It needs to be cleaned out a little bit. I'm gonna turn the system off, turn the oxygen off, turn the acetylene off. Now I need to shut this system down. And in order to do that, I've never known which one of these turns off first. I don't think it matters. We can argue, we can fight. If somebody knows absolute fact and can back it up, tell me. Anyway, we can turn the fuel gas off first. We can turn the oxygen off second. We're just turning the cylinders off. We're gonna secure the system like we're gonna leave overnight or for a week. At this point, I wanna bleed the system, okay? I wanna take, take the pressure off of the off of the regulators, I want to bleed the system. So I'm going to bleed the fuel gas first. Both needles drop. At that point, I can back the adjusting screw to the left till it becomes loose, close the fuel gas. I can either push the oxygen lever or I can open the flame adjusting oxygen, bleed the system, Turn that off. Turn the pressure adjusting screw to the left. Roll my hoses up, I'm good to go. One other thing that I noticed when I was putting this together and I've, I failed to mention, this torch has built in flashback arresters in it. Older models don't, but you can get these cute little guys right here, they are reverse flow check valves and flashback arresters. And you can put them in line in your hoses and to your torch. Actually go like that. You got an older torch body. Good idea to pick these rascals up here. Again, I don't take any of this for granted. This is like, you know, you're working with high pressure oxygen and fuel gas. There are just, there's just certain safety procedures that you go through. I don't take for granted that everybody that comes in, even though they've been a welder for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, I don't take for granted that they know this. I've seen people develop some bad habits on doing certain things turning cylinders on with the regulator, the way they light up, hot starts. I've seen them cut corners and it, it kind of makes me a little nervous. <clears throat> if they work safe, accurate, if they pay attention to their work area, I don't have a problem, but again, don't take it for granted. Uh, there are other videos out on this, references. I hope you found this educational. Please subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching well.com. I'm Bob Moffat.